Today we're going to talk about a very interesting version of Blender. It's a fork of Blender and some add-ons that were developed at the Spa Studios. So this, just right off the bat, is only for testing. So there is no active support and uh, it's really just about uh, promote, about showing the ideas. It is the version of Blender that is featured in uh, this video. So it's a package. It consists of core changes to Blender and uh, two add-ons. Today, we're going to be talking about this 2D animation add-on, which is dependent on some core changes. So if you want to try this out yourself, you can install it for Windows. It's not available for any other platforms, but you could put it together yourself. But the purpose of this video is uh, just to make it easier for the community to see what the tool is like. And uh, so it's easier to discuss what features or what things might uh, eventually be put into Blender. If you're trying this out yourself, you can just launch it from the folder you downloaded it from. It is a portable version of Blender. So if you already have 3.3 enabled, make sure you have the add-ons with Spa and the name enabled. And then you will have this sequencer and the animation panels on the side. Today, we're just focusing on animation. So starting at the top here, we have just a, a general screen mirror. So if you want to mirror the entire viewport, you can hit this button. Uh, additionally, if you use control shift and middle mouse click, you can rotate the view. And then we have an option to reset it both at the bottom or you can click up here. This button will just hop us into draw mode. So if, as long as we have a grease pencil object selected, we can go into draw mode and start drawing. We have a plus button here. This will add a new drawing for us so I can give it a name. And we can pick how far it will be from the camera in 3D space, or we can have it be placed at the 3D cursor. This allows us to orient our drawings in 3D space. There we go. I have the option fade inactive objects enabled. So now that this new drawing is enabled, the other drawing becomes out of focus. And if I switch, right, that would change. As I jump between these two, we see the different layers that are related to each drawing uh, in this lower panel over here. Conveniently, we have this uh, materials palette over here, so I can just come in here and pick a palette. And now I can start drawing in whichever color I prefer, and this is a new object. If I leave the drawing space and I go into 3D space, you can see that the different objects are actually placed in different places in the 3D world. Now, uh, getting started with the first tool, which is quick edit, if you select, this is how we can select a, a stroke. And then we can actually mirror the actual, like the, the actual keyframe itself, both in the X and in the Y. And we have an option to focus this tool on uh, the, the active layer. So if you have multiple layers and multiple strokes, we can just focus that down to one. Now the quick edit tool has a bunch of options, right? So first for selection, if you select the drawing, you can use control plus arrow key to move the drawing up or to the right or down very accurately, or you can just select and move it around. We can just use A to select all and Alt A to deselect all. Okay, so scaling, you can just grab a corner and scale. We can hold shift to uh, maintain the proportions and we can hold Alt to scale from the center. Okay, rotations, if you just put your mouse around a corner, we can just rotate our stroke like that. We can also use this as a pivot point, so we can set the pivot point and then rotate around that pivot. By grabbing along an edge, we can skew. So if we just grab until we see this little arrow, we can go whoop, whoop, and now we're skewing. We have copy and paste, so we can just select Control C and Control V to paste another copy and then move it around. Shift D to duplicate, and we can hit X to delete like normal. By hitting M, we can switch which layer we're actually, uh, this, uh, this is on. Okay, so if we wanna jump between layers while we're drawing, what we can do is enable an option, fade in active layers. And now, whichever layer we have active will be the one that appears here. And now we can use Alt click to jump between the strokes. So I wanna be here. I'll now wanna draw something in the red. And then I'm gonna click Alt and maybe I'll switch my pen. And now I'm on this guy and I'm going to draw something in the blue and we can just use alt click to switch between the layers. So the next thing we're going to look at is the peg bars. So 
if I disable selections here, I have access to the peg bars. This tool will allow me to transform the peg bars and we're going to attach it to a layer. So I have this layer here that just has one stroke. You could have an animation on the same layer, uh, similar results. What we're going to do is hit plus to create a peg. And we're going to attach that peg to attach rather this layer. So we have the layer selected and then we pick which peg it's attached to. So now this peg is related to this layer, right? So here's our layer. And if I move, right? So now this peg animation can be keyframed. So let's say we start it here and then we go over here with it. Now it's moving. We also have this pivot point that we can set some rotation around and that can also be animated. Now this is a, a non-destructive animation. So even though we've moved our, our grease pencil like this, if I hit this mute button, right, we can reveal the original animation, which is nothing. It's just sitting there uh, still. And now I can turn that back on and then we can see it moving again. And that is how the peg bars work. Okay, so now I have this very basic animation of just a stroke moving from side to side. And in the animation pa panel here, I have the ability to change how many of the keyframes I want to show. So maybe I want to show two that are behind and then I want to show two that are in front. And now when I navigate around the timeline, I can see these different keyframes. I can choose to have them fade as we get out from the center or I can have them all at a constant uh, thickness and I can choose colors. So we could just red and blue. If in addition to this keyframed animation, I wanted to have a, let's say I add another peg bar. So I'll add a peg and assign my current layer to it. Jump to the drawing mode, grab my peg. And now in addition to this whole animation I have here, I want to put this in the bottom. And then when it gets to the end, I want it in the top. So now I have two sort of things going on at once, but the key, the, the onion skinning is in place. Well, there's an option right here for world. So I can set this to world and I'll have to cache the frames because I've adjusted the animation. And now that that's done, I am able to quickly scrub through the animation and actually see where the stroke will be in, in world space, accounting for all the transformations from the peg as well. So now I can, I can show you this duration option and here I can just use this button to push some of the animation. So I wanted this one frame to last for five frames. I can actually push the animation of the other keyframes over uh, with this guy. So let's say then this one, oh, that's quite short actually. I'd like this to be whatever, five frames instead of two. And now it's, it's on there for longer before it changes. And, and this is pushing all of your keyframes down the timeline as you do that. So flipping, what flipping allows us to do is if you were up here assigning different types of keyframes, so let's say I assigned a breakdown to one, two, and three keyframes like this. What I can now do is go to my flipping section and filter. You can filter between types of layers. And I also, I want to filter for just these breakdown keyframes. And now when I hit previous and next, it's just going to jump to those breakdowns. Okay. So let's quickly look at how the shift and trace tool works. So with the shift and trace selected, it uses the exact same transform box as the quick edit tool. So it uses all the same functions, rotate, scale, skew, etc. And what we can do here is use alt to select one of our strokes. So let's say I would like to select the first stroke and on this frame 50, I'm going to create a new stroke that is going to be a trace of this guy. So I'm just doing this with a mouse right now, but obviously what I can do now is I can start tracing this trans this uh, shifted frame and it's just temporarily shifted so this is only for my reference and it's not going to actually render it will render uh, where it used to be so that's just a temporary shift and trace system for you and the final really cool feature i want to demo here is the uh, pasting of references so we can just come over here and take a screenshot with the windows screenshot tool and then moving back over into our blender window, if we use control shift and V, we can paste. And what we've actually done is we've pasted this on a layer in our grease pencil object. 
So I can add another layer like this one. And I could then start tracing over the whale. And I have, there's my, my drawing, there's the whale. And this whale, let's say I wanted to maybe animate or something, I could actually add a duplicate keyframe. And now I'm going to put it down here. And the reference also has an onion skin. The reference can essentially be animated. And that is the reference. All right, so that's the end of the demo. And if you want to hopefully see uh, some of this integrated into uh, real Blender, I'd recommend making a post on right click select under grease pencil and uh, just telling them what you want to see and why. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.